I don't know how well this comes in on the camera, but in Peach's I can you just, words. But in Peach's idol animation here, uh I feel the need to point out that she loses her mouth when she's sleeping. Which I must say is quite the superpower. <laughs> yes, she's turned into other YP. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so welcome back everyone to another episode of Paper Mario. Uh, this is the Hitman Channel and we are your tour guides, Jacob. And Noah, did you actually get the reference? Uh, I did not, but I still found the idea of there being a reference funny. Uh, I'm like that. I've been like that for a f fucking long ass time where I can la find a joke funny and not have any idea what the hell the person telling the joke is going on about. It's actually a reference to the movie Coraline. Ah. Oh, let me see. We have turned into a Koopanator, I think, is what they it's are. It's like there's other versions of every character in, in like, the alternate world. And, uh, because Coraline finds uh, the real YV a bit annoying, in the other reality, uh, the other mother sews his mouth shut. Huh. Coraline's a creepy fucking movie. Yeah, I've I've heard. Also, this is a bit easier to see, so that's also, good. Also, I didn't realize when I was looking up the information for that joke that the cat in that movie is voiced by Keith David. Huh. Who, uh, I know best. I'm a drunk, very good thing. You can pass through. In the thing. Was who in the thing? Wait, Kyle. Or? That, that's his character's name, Childs. Oh, he was a gargoyles? What? Hmm. Huh. Did we have anything to put in the chest? I can't remember. Let's check anyway. I have no idea what- Oh, he's also Dr. Yep. Facilier in Nightmare Before- Er, not Nightmare Before Prin Princess and the Frog. Why is he- <laughs> Nightmare Before- Nightmare Before Princess! <laughs> Nightmare before Princess in the Frog. <laughs> uh, Draw very good, but you can pass through. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> what the f- He voiced Gary's Caller in one episode of Spongebob. <laughs> I guess you got a voice. Uh, 2018, so. <laughs> uh, maybe they were doing a tri like a Gary Translator episode or something. I don't know. Where's my relief already? My shift has been over for ages now. Listen, could you go find that slacker and get him up here? Please, I'm exhausted. It looks like this. He's probably goofing off outside of the castle somewhere. Here, take this to find him. Got the castle key. It's the key to the entrance of the castle. You won't be able to get downstairs about it. Alright, and our uh, espionage is going brilliantly so far. Also, I, I found an interesting article um, that uh, mentions um, the uh, the origin of the Porgs in The Last Jedi, or uh -huh. how they were created in reality, I guess. Um, which, this is actually really interesting. Apparently, the Porgs were inspired by the real-life Puffet, which, I mean, you can tell they're inspired yeah. by Puffins. Um, but what I didn't realize is that these Puffins actually populated the... Island Wildlife Reserve of Skellig Michael, which is the real life location that stands in for Akito in the movie, huh. um, off the coast of Ireland. And they couldn't be removed physically while filming. And so Ryan Johnson was like, well, we have our own indigenous species. <laughs> Off the island while filming. 
I that's actually really clever. I really like that actually. That's, that's really, really that's cool. A really nice work. And I don't care what anybody says. I fucking love the forks. <laughs> yeah, same. That's so yeah. sleepy. So very sleepy. Just let me catch a quick nap, but don't tell anyone. This has been me for the last, like, week or so. <laughs> I probably can't bring him up, so we'll just turn into him. See, I have just... I have had major issues with staying awake during the day, and it's like... If my sleep schedule was constantly shifting around, I would blame that, but it's consistent. It's a terrible sleep schedule in terms of the actual times, but it's consistent. So I at least shouldn't be having that big of a problem actually staying awake otherwise. Okay, here's my question to you. When do you usually wake up in the morning? Noon. Okay. Like, go to bed like 4 a.m., so... So that's eight hours. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. Ah, finally, about time. You're so, you're so late again. Don't you know how to read the safe schedule? Well, I guess I'll let it go through. I'll let it go this time. But watch it, okay? Okay, have a good shift. I'm shoving off. It's a bit more. Don't goof off either. You're on thin ice, buddy. Like it's like it's better to sleep during the night and not technically the day. <laughs> Yeah, but like well, it's it's it, it, like it's definitely more important to just have a consistent sleep schedule because if you throw it off, it throws off everything. It's like, it's like yeah. if you have an inconsistent sleep schedule, it throws off everything about your mental and physical health. Yeah. Basically. Life advice with the Nelsons. Yeah. Have a consistent have a consistent sleep schedule, even if it's patently terrible. <laughs> okay, okay. Everything's finally. <coughs> Daddy. Even if Mario shows up with all the star spirits, we'll still be all. <coughs> Absolutely. Affirmative. You're right, Kami Kubat. You know, you'd think after, like, the first three breakouts, they would have given her a different room. Yeah, you'd think after the... F you'd think after the first breakout, they'd at least install, like, cameras. Ah, <laughs> uh, did you have... S oh, did you have this guy? Did I, have this I don't think he even spoke before, actually. Do you have like a note for like Book Star written down? Because I didn't know his name before. I have notes for Blue Star and Ribbon Star. And then I'll just take this one. This is Clebar. Ha ha. What a pleasure to meet you. My name is Clebar. Thank you for saving me. Huff and Puff is gone. Not that clever. <laughs> Huff and Puff is gone, so the flowers and flower fields can live peacefully once more. I feel that if you don't come, flower. I feel like 
I feel that if he hadn't come, flower fields would never again have seen the light. Now there is only one of us, our spirits still trapped. Just one more, Mario. Here, please use my power as you continue your fight. Mario's starting to get up to six. Mario can now use Time Out, a new Star Spirit power. With Time Out, you can stop time and stop all enemies in their tracks. <laughs> I love the casualness of just time stopping abilities in the Mario universe. <laughs> because, like, in every other universe, that would be, like, one of the most overpowered things you could have. But in Mario, they just throw them out like candy. Yeah. Also, given its name, I you, you have to use that on Junior Troopa at least once. Uh, I will if I remember to. Now, you are able to use the power of six Star Spirits. If you use mine as well, it should prove to be extremely helpful in battle. Don't become overconfident, though. This overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. You must be careful. Bowser has power after as well. I'm assuming you didn't catch what that was a reference to. No, no, I didn't, because I was thinking of my own joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you even hear what the joke was? No, I did not. Yeah, so you're like, don't like, be worried, like, be worried of overconfidence, and I followed up with overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer, which is a quote from Darkest Dungeon. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, no, I wouldn't have gotten that anyway. Yeah. Remember that you're even strong. Remember that even stronger enemies await you. I hope our powers will help you so that you may help us. We're all depending on you. I'll go back to Star Haven now. I can't wait to get there. I've been extremely worried about everyone. Yeah, the joke I was thinking about was another time out joke. I was just thinking, bad New Jersey, bad state, go to your room. <laughs> That's I... one of my favorite John Tron jokes. <laughs> Congratulations, young Mario! You saved the Star Spirit, man! Because of your efforts, Flower Fields is beautiful again! Bro? Thank you, Mario. Uh, it was worth living so long to meet a man of your stature, man. Please, come and see me again. I'll be looking forward to it. I gotta watch back the other episode and figure out how I did that voice before we do that Ocarina of Time and let's play. Yeah. Alright, now that we've finished Flower Fields, I have no idea where the hell to go for the next area, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I know what the next area is, I just don't remember how to get there at all. Reports from the bizarre intermission no door, another world, same story. A world probably where flowers slides on the other side of the mysterious door in Minty's Flower Garden. It should become a self surprise to learn the prophecy coons were causing trouble there. But guess what? Our own Mario did a little extermination of the pest in that garden. By King Bowser's what? Underlings out of the world, he also saved the other star spirit. Now that's flower power. And then what the heck of the sign say? Toad Town Underground News. XXX and 000 are heart, 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 heart. Did you know that? Now there's secrets out. I got the blowing toad. Alright then. Uh. Uh. I searched where the hell do I go for the next area, and all the results are doom. <laughs> Which Doom? Uh, mostly Eternal, but there was some Doom 2 mixed in there. Huh. Oh, it's you. You came at such a good time. There's a guest waiting for you. Uh, was there a... No, ninjas haven't shown up yet. Uh... They haven't shown up yet, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I'm trying to think of how... Uh... Nice to meet you. I come from Starborn Valley. 
Airborne family is a shiver region. Uh, a chill place in the far, far to the north and the very end of the earth. Mario, who called who from there, said that, wait, is, no, that's not Mario. Correct, that, that word is Merly. Okay. Merly, who hails from there, said that he had something important to tell you, Mario. Merly of Starburn Valley is my son, Mario. He seems he's calling for you. If he is searching for you, he can be sure something important is afoot. He must go to Starburn Valley. Do not delay. Yes, please hurry. I will run ahead to take tidings of you to Merlin. I think somewhere deep below Totan is a pipe connected to, the sh to Shiver City. Okay, that's how we get there. Starburn Valley is located quite near Shiver City. Mario, hurry to meet my son. He awaits in, Star in Starburn Valley. Alright. Back to the sewer, everyone. <laughs> oh, man. I, I gave him the... the I, I tried to do an impression of uh, Aaron's voice for the old man in Ninja Gaiden. And I was waiting for him to say something else in red to sh so I could shout it like Aaron did. Shinobi! <laughs> I'm going to die in a minute. one chance. Because I didn't come up with the idea until after that was gone. And then I'll just cover another one of these, because these are nice for boss fights. <laughs> that's a... That's an underrated Aaron Rage series. <laughs> it's a short one, but still, it's very good. Got some very good Rage moments in there. Okay, now, okay, there are a number of things that we haven't, that we can do, that we have yet to do in the sewer right now. One of them is actually progressing the plot. And, but I know it's in at least one of the special the special <laughs> blocks that we couldn't break beforehand somewhere in here. Also, surprisingly enough, that is that is a game I've considered uh, doing a dub for. Oh, what? Has all the quote unquote cutscenes, but in Japanese. So we could totally dump that, which I, I think it'd be funny. It wasn't here. I just love because, like, when I when I started off uh, dubbers. Here we go. It, I started off dubbers after um, they ended the real-time fan dub, like the regular real-time fan dub, uh, but they still do real-time fan dub games. Uh, so I was trying to think of like what to like how I would make dubbers stand apart from real-time fan dub and real-time fan dub games. And then we just kind of started forming a cinematic universe with a ridiculous lore, and I'm like, that's how we do it. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, most of their dubs were just complete one-offs, even if they dub... Well, I guess there, there's, like, some loose connections between all the Sonic dubs, but... Nothing's, no, nothing as like expansive as our as our cinematic universe. <laughs> so I very much enjoyed uh, that aspect of Dumbers.
and we are so high level that we don't even get experience for that battle. <laughs> yep, because like they get like the battles will give few less and less experience points like the lower level you are to balance things out. A level cap, I believe, is thirty in Paper Mario. And so low enough area, low enough level areas relative to you will just give nothing. Huh. A, a minute it works for balancing. And it's nice for getting, and I suppose running around old areas not getting experience for anything is a nice way to prepare yourself for modern Paper Mario games. <laughs> Because I don't know why they're just allergic to RPG progression systems now. And it's really annoying because it's just battles are like the big thing in RPGs. And if you don't have like and in the recent Paper Mario games, including apparently Origami King, they're just, they're just kind of pointless. Uh, anyway, we'll do the ranting when we do Origami King, I guess. Or Color Splash, we can do the Color Splash every wall. But anyway, uh, blooper! I don't know if either of us had a dedicated blooper voice, but... <laughs> Down. Well then, we'll just assume no one did. Super blooper. He's a fucking super blooper. Uh, whoa! It's huge! It's usually the biggest blooper ever! I, I mean, no! That's just not accurate. I'm Actually, sorry, I'm sorry, the word bloop Thulu just came to mind! <laughs> Max HP seventy attack zero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know why, but the idea of just Cthulhu, but instead of a squid, like a normal like squid octopus, he's just a fucking Mario blooper. It's really funny to me. <laughs> well, I know what I'm putting on the thumbnail. <laughs> Here is the one non-optional of all the blooper fights. Right. Get back and you beg a brilliant point. I'm just going to keep doing Barrio out for the blooper babies whenever they show up, so we don't have to switch back to battle. Actually, what am I doing? It doesn't even waste a turn. Bo, get out here and slap a bitch. Because <laughs> now that you upgraded her, she does six damage per round. And here's the children. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, I just thought of something really funny. What? Uh, never mind. I'll, we I'll weave it in some. I'll, I'll weave it in somehow to this. This is a blooper baby. Uh, super blooper spits them out and they come to drain you. You know, I hear that, uh, this, uh, birth was unplanned. Could say 
they were a mistake, or should I say, a blooper. <laughs> God damn it. Max HP 6, attack power 2, defense power 0. I was, I was definitely initially very concerned as to where you were going with that. <laughs> we need to beat them quickly so they can't drain us dry. They're so cute though. They are pretty cute. They're pretty cute. Rain down storms. Storms of stars. Bloopers in general are like the second cutest Mario enemy. Mm. Oh, and, and now we're red. Alright. Red time. Red, red, red. That's, that's actually just doing that before we hide Mario. And that just reminded me, um, I, uh, started watching, uh, this, uh, YouTube series, uh, today, um, where they play this game called the Movie Movie Game, where basically, the guy takes two movie titles, um, one... And, and combines them in a way where, like, the second title starts with the end of the first title. So, so like, one of the one of the examples he always gives is like, um, and, and like he'll he'll like also combine the plot synopses of the two films and like tell the person the combined plot synopses and have them guess what the combined title is. Uh, so like, uh, the example he always gave, he, he always gives at the beginning is, um, a ragtag group of abandoned appliances, uh, go on an adventure seeking their master while also running away from the T-1000. <laughs> and, of course, the, the title is the brave little toast terminator to judgment <laughs> um, oh man and one of those fucking movies involves them using a ceiling fan to fly to mars oh yeah brave little toast to mars <laughs> uh, yeah and that is now something i definitely want to do for an episode of podcast Alright. Just, just do that, where, where we each combine with a, come up with a few of those, and have the other person try to guess. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah, that does sound fun. First, he, he comes up with, like, a lot of really clever examples. Uh, and, uh, most recently he's been having, um, uh, well, he's been doing some long distance uh, ones, um, and he's actually had a lot of uh, other YouTubers guest starring um, in the episodes, including Pro CD, uh, Jax Films has guest starred on a few. Um, The female lead from Birdemic showed up on one episode. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Movie, movie, game. I, for I forget the name of the YouTube channel it's on. Uh, but it's, it's pretty entertaining. And some of them are like super obscure films too. What's like, uh, what was the one? Uh, it was like. Oh, I'm trying to think what it was. Um, uh, <laughs> they did one. There's a door there. There's 
special door there. I forgot about this guy. <laughs> well, 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 looky here. Hello, hello, hello. Rick Cheeto at your service. You're quite the interesting fellow finding this place. What am I doing here? Just doing a little business and minding my own. You, my friend, have just stumbled into great fortune, for I have a deal for you. I have something special, and I only got 64 coins. Deal? Trust me, it's a bargain. Uh, sure. Oh, okay. Well oh, done, my good man. I thank you deeply. Now, if you thought that item was good, I have something even better at the same price. 64 coins. But I warn you, this offer is only good right now. You'll be thinking you still be missing the opportunity. So how about it? Do we have a deal or not? Uh, sure, why not? That is pretty good. Well done, my good man. I thank you deeply. Now, if you thought that item was good, I have something even better at the same price. 64 coins. I warn you, that's so good. Yeah, but, 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 what? Let's see. That's pretty good. That's Mario Destroy a weaker enemy. That is very good. Yeah, <laughs> how deep does this well go? Okay, repel gel out isn't as good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, screw it, why not? One more. Star piece, okay, cool. Well, we're broke, but we have stuff. <laughs> uh, story of Nicolas Cage's life. <laughs> Ah, that's how you get into this goddamn house. Okay, I was wondering about that. Oh, now a shortcut to the bottom of the sewer. Sweet. That's the story uh, of the guy who broke into. The, I forget the exact story, but there's like, it, like Nicholas Cage told a story about how like some naked dude just showed up in his house. Like, I, oh, I need to look up the story. <laughs> Hang on. Please do, because I'll admit I am now very curious about this story. Yeah, Nicholas Jude. Naked Stranger. Damn it. Okay, I was hoping that would outdo it. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. Here it is. Okay.
the, the, the eating of Funsicle one really makes that. <laughs> is so absurd that I would have expected Nicolas Cage to be the one doing it, I'm gonna be honest. Jump increases, and on top of that, you can now do a tornado jump by pressing, it, by pressing A again and while in the air, so cool. You can now hit things that are higher up. And do more damage, which is very convenient. I'm purposely not using the jump because it wasn't doing a ton of damage. Well, uh, hopefully that life stream is still there. <laughs> And we're leaving because I don't feel like dealing with that with that guy. <clears throat> yeah, I mean I can't wait for that movie to come out. That's that's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> yeah. And who knows, maybe it'll actually be like like really it, it could be like really like critically acclaimed if like if anything is to go by, like, I mean, Shia LaBeouf's, like, sort of autobiographical film, Honey Boy, turned out really well. I still haven't seen it, but I heard very, I heard pretty good things about it. And, uh... Yeah. And Lucas and Hedges is in it, so that's a... Mm. Lucas Edge is a good actor. Mm. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, and now we're in a frozen sewer. So I think we've arrived at Shiver City. We need to get around to watching some more, like, newer movies that have come out. Like... Because most of the movies I've been watching recently, well, of course, like, most of the movies I've been watching recently are for my class, since I have to watch three films a week for that class. Uh -huh. so I don't have much time for, like, other film viewings. Uh, but, like, and then, like, the other films I've watched are, like, either for the podcast, which we've been watching older films right now. Um, 
Chapter 7, Star Spirits on Ice. Are you... what? <laughs> Sadly, this will not be an Ice Rink musical chapter. That's just a pun on it being really cold here. <laughs> have you seen that series? I have not, but I've, I've seen the thumbnails for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Oh, I, oh god, it was originally Machinima that, to show how old that series oh, is. Oh god, Machinima. Yeah, it was originally Machinima. Um, it's now, I, I guess, Rooster Teeth acquired the rights to it. If they're not, and, uh, to you, and there's a, there's a... They, they ran into a bit of uh, legal trouble with it and had to change the name to Hedgehog for Hire. I mean, it's still Sonic, but they, like, like, I guess because of Wait. Rooster Teeth being owned, because Rooster Teeth is owned by at and T, I I believe. Oh. Uh Okay. Somewhere, all I know is that somewhere in the line of ownership is full screen, and then higher up the ladder, way high up the ladder, is Warner Media, which is owned by AT and T. Which is owned by AT and T. So yeah, way up, way high up the ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I just want to point out that I dropped a mushroom to pick up a potato, and the mushroom just flew through the wall of the house and disappeared. Because we, because we. Because we had a conversation. All right, no reaction that works. In the podcast episode where we talked about uh, like company buyouts in the film industry, um, uh -huh. we, we talked about the, the the concept of a death battle movie, and we're thinking like, well, what actual death battles could be adapted into film with both? Because both characters would have to be owned by Warner Brothers. Hold on, Cal Wiz is everyone's favorite quizmaster, Chuck Quizbo. Want to try the quiz? Then let's go to the question. I haven't seen this guy in a while. Question. <laughs> they could adapt the. Which of Mario's final commands is on the far left uh, strategies? That'd be strategies. Batman death rates. Oh, yeah, I guess they could do that now. Rights wise. Congratulations. Here is your star piece. You correctly answered five questions so far. Good luck next time. Well, 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 so long, farewell, till we meet again! Similar to your shy guy voice. <laughs> yeah. it, uh, hang on. Uh, crap. I can't do a very good impression of Bob Saget, which is a reference to one of the worst films I've ever watched for Miserable Movie Martin Monday Farce of the Penguins. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, like, I would have watched it with you, because parodies, but, like, it's not even worth, like, you, uh, like, to put it in perspective for you, um, a hard ticket to Hawaii is Citizen Kane compared to Farce of the Penguins. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's, Farce of the Penguins is the first movie I've ever watched for Miserable Movie Monday that I actually was, like, very close to turning off. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, Jesus. 
<laughs> like, I wanted to turn that movie off at so many moments. Anyway, um, it also doesn't help that I was watching it, like, very sleep-deprived as well. Um, like, I literally, I got up at, like, I, I don't know why I had gotten up at, like, 8 in the morning, I think. I, I had gotten up very early, and then I had gotten up early for some reason, and then, like, I saw, I looked at my phone, um, and I looked at, you know, my Disney Tops Collect app, uh, and they do, like, they have, like, a daily card that correlates to, like, a holiday of that day, um, and that particular day's card was... World Penguin Day, and I was like, well, now's a better time than any to watch this shit, because I <laughs> bought it for a dollar. I, like, I actually own this movie on DVD, um, because I got it for a dollar at a, like, a local comic book shop in Winona, uh -huh. and, oh, gosh, anyway, um, I should have used that time ranting to also multitask and think of a new voice for the penguins. <laughs> um, oh, wait, hang on. If you'd like to see my husband, uh, he's in the other room. Please, go right in. That's, my, that's the best I can do for as a Skinner impression. Well... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it took a little bit to register what we were looking for. <laughs> but I was like, ah, there's a penguin lying there. Oh. <laughs> also, the penguins would also be a very interesting Madagascar characters to incorporate into a film fight for the podcast. At some point, oh, yeah. although I don't know who would pit, pit them against, but they would be a very interesting opponent to analyze. Yeah. No reply. Mayor Mayor Penguin's potter doesn't budge an inch. What's this? He has a memo in his hand that says "Herring Way." Darling, would you be up for a cup of tea? Hmm. Oh. Dear, you know you'll catch cold if you sleep there. No! <laughs> Puts on yeah, sunglasses. Yeah. 
<laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist the CSI Man reference. That show loves starting things with bad jokes. <laughs> Reminds me. Uh, do you know how those captious things actually determine whether or not you're a robot? No, not exactly. Okay, so like, the assumption is that it's just like being able to identify like the pictures of the whatever it wants you to find pictures of. But in reality, what it's like, or just clicking the checkbox, but in reality, what it's doing is it's just, it's, it's tracking, like, okay, a lot of sites have slightly different variants of them, but like, in the most basic form, what it is is that the website is tracking your mouse movements and checking your browser history to make sh like, to make sure to, to check to see if like your actions resemble something that to check to make sure your actions resemble an actual person. Mm. Okay. Also, appar apparently, which is why you which is why you will get a lot of captures if you're say in incognito mode all the time. Which, as one person on QI once put, 
being an in incognito isn't the sign of being a robot, it's the sign of being a wanker. Which isn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, it's happened in two games, which is not many, but it's still a weird trend. Man, if I had a nickel for every Mario game in which penguins force you to solve mysteries, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's strange that it happened twice. <laughs> Uh, just Phineas and Ferb. Oh, I, I... Oh, yeah, it's a doofenshmirtz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember what the actual thing I'm, I'm not sure what what the actual episode was, too. All I remember is that I think the original line was something to do with a sock puppet, and also it became, like, is slash became a meme for a while. Pardon me? What? Do you remember the episode where, you know, uh, he's trying to prove to Vanessa, his daughter, that he's cool, and then he ends up falling down the hill with glue on his hands and gets records stuck to his fingers and Perry uses his, like, mind control helmet to uh, cause him to become a master DJ and he sings the song There's a Platypus Controlling Me. Do you remember this episode? Vaguely, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, so the song has become a meme now. They, yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's a penguin speaking. <laughs> the buildings are Thank rare. You. Building's a warehouse specifically. Uh, nobody can get in because some careless guard managed to lose the key for the door. I can't believe I lost it. Uh, I ought to retreat. I ought to retrace my steps. I like how you said some careless guard and then immediately admitted to losing the key. <laughs> Well, uh, found the key. <laughs> Alright. I think apparently ice is less dense than water, so it's floating. <laughs> I think the warehouse key. Alright. Oh, it's apparently from the movie. Oh! It's, it's from across the second dimension. If I had a nickel for every time I've been doomed by a puppet, I would have two nickels. That's not a lot, but it's funny that it happened twice. Alright, go into yeah. the warehouse. Oh uh, man, I gotta watch. I, I, there's no way I'm gonna be able to like rewatch the entire series by the time the new movie comes out, but I should at least rewatch that movie. That first movie. What in the... Why are you in my fireplace? You found my secret room through the chimney. Ingenious. Hello, penguin. Oh, yes, I'm seriously giving every penguin, no matter how important they look, the John Blaney voice. I'm, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you heard of me? 
What? Mayor Penguin was murdered. I'm the chief suspect. If I had a nickel for every time the Paper Mario series referenced Ernest Hemingway, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's strange that it happened twice. What's the other Hemingway reference? Uh, Thousand Year Door. Uh, one of the chapters is called For Whom the... Like, one of the chapters is referencing, like, the chapter names references for whom the bell tolls. Oh, I, I didn't realize that was Hemingway. Yeah. I think it's like, for whom the pig tolls was the chapter name. He's a very famous author, but I cannot for the life of me name exactly what books he wrote. Uh, all I know is for whom the bell tolls, and then there's the... Three minutes summary of Ernest Hemingway's life by Randy Feldface, the puppet comedian. Oh, he did uh, Old Man in the Sea as well. Ah, right. Uh, anyway, okay. by the way, look. I recommend. I, I highly recommend looking up that Randy Feldface bit. It's kind of fun. Ernest Hemingway had a fucking weird life. Uh, you have to. You have to send me that. Uh, later. Um... What? Mayor? Oh, wait, I already read this line. You must be joking! That's ridiculous! I did no such thing. You could say... Uh, that note was a red herring way. <laughs> you... you're... you're very suspicious, huh? Well, I suppose I would be, too. It appears as though I should drop in at the mayor's house. Engage stairs. The fuck? Alright, then come on, let's go to the mayor's house. We just have a staircase hidden in your floor that leads directly to another person's house. Oh, no, that's no. the same house, it's just a secret room in his house. Okay. I should have enough time to I thought this. he just had a stairway that led to, like, some underground tunnel or something that connected his house to the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a super, like, it's not super common, but it's like a not, like, uncommon trope. I'm making a joke. I know, and I'm trying to kill the joke. <laughs> well, reality, Knives Out is actually one of the most original murder mysteries I've ever seen. You still haven't seen it, right? I have not. I I am aware. Uh, if you can find anyone with an Amazon Prime account, it's on Prime. All right. Uh. What? What? Mayor Penguin was clutching a piece of paper that had Harryway written on it. Wait, you get Amazon Prime Video just having an Amazon Prime account? Wait, what? You get Amazon Prime Video just having an Amazon Prime account? Yeah, that's how it works. Well, I'm an idiot. Do you have a Prime account? My, my, okay, my family shares a Prime account. Yeah, you totally have access to Prime Video. Well, goddammit. Which, which, now at least we know there's not a single, uh, 
there's not a single uh, streaming service I have that you don't. Uh, well. Which would be nice for... Th that will be convenient, but now I feel dumb for not putting that obvious thing together sooner. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I already had access to all the Twilight movies because my sisters were into Twilight back in the day. I didn't... Oh, okay. So I just have them on DVD. <laughs> alright. Uh, anyway. Ooh, also, Prime just added a watch party feature. Oh, nice! Watch movies on there together. Uh, what? What? May have... Oh, I already read this. If that were true, I most certainly would have noticed it. Hmm, he definitely does appear to be holding a piece of paper. Yes, of course. It's a message about his death. Wow, I can't believe Phoenix Wright riffed off. <laughs> told us the murderer's identity. I mean, it's not like someone specifically wrote that message to frame someone else. That could never happen. So, Mr. Harringway, you cold-hearted murderer. It's... It all makes sense now. No wonder your novels are so exciting and suspenseful. <laughs> it's like everything going wrong that could possibly go wrong in a play so like there's 
it's a murder, the play they're performing is a murder mystery, and it's supposed to be this big plot twist that the guy they thought was dead was a actually faked his own death, but he enters, he, he, he enters twice before he's supposed to. <laughs> so it's, it's, and like, way, I mean way before he's supposed to. I love the play that goes wrong. It's so good. I thought Ryan Sweep. I know I suggested it to you a while back, but have you ever, like, did you ever get around to watching Garth Marenghi's Dark Place? Uh, no. I highly recommend it. Like, it's like there's a lot of just like <sighs> words. Sorry, uh, like based on your big descriptions of the play that goes wrong, I like it's kind of the play that goes wrong, but they refuse to admit anything's going wrong. In st I mean, in some aspects, wrong is definitely the same. Like they're they're like trying their hardest to <laughs> not like let the the stuff going wrong. And it was like, like, the comedy is more like, they're blissfully unaware that everything is terrible. Ah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, one of the, like, one of the characters' voice is in a different, like, entirely different audio track. Ah, uh, okay. That's not like too much. You have yeah. to send me that. Alright, I'll send you, Randy, I'll send you the puppet and the British comedy. The Australian comedian and the British comedy. There we go. <laughs> I seem to remember going to the shelf to get this souvenir for Herring Way. Oh, yes, of course. I reached up, slipped, and whacked my head on the floor. Yeah, that's what happened. Here you are, Herring Way. This is what I was reaching for. Dog time was great fun. So many interesting sights. Wish you could have been there. Sometime after all this hubbub settles down, I'll give you a full account of the big city. Well, uh, thank you, old friend. That's very thoughtful. Mayor, here we were thinking you'd been murdered. The whole city was up in arms. Next time, be more careful. No one think to check his pulse? <laughs> nope. Ah, yes, so sorry. Ha ha. I thought it rather entertaining, actually. Besides, everything's okay now. The mayor's just fine. I must return to my home now. I believe I've just had an idea for the sequel to my new novel. Um, I have the best intentions, but for some reason I always... I always end up causing a ruckus. Hello. Sorry about all that. I must apologize. Hey, you're Mario, aren't you? Well, well, let me welcome you to Shiver City, Jewel of the North. What's the matter? Oh, you want to hike over to Starborn Valley, do you? I see, of course. I'll tell the gatekeeper to allow you out of the city. You'd better bundle up. Alright, and with that, we have resolved the Penguin murder mystery by revealing that there was no murder at all. That's certainly one way to do it. And since we are basically past time, <laughs> we're going to call this episode here. So, next time... That's not the right... That's not the right button. That's not... That... That... Ah, okay. Next time on Paper Mario, we'll be trekking out of Shiver City towards Starborn Valley to try and rescue the last star spirit. Until then, I have been Jacob. I'm Noah. Peace. Adios.